Uh, so, okay, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> so, this, so this is a slightly interesting title for this particular presentation. Um, we didn't really use Linkerd to schedule the tests, but Linkerd greatly facilitated our ability to schedule the tests, uh, six to 8,000 COVID tests in a very short period of time. And we're gonna kind of talk you through how it helped us troubleshoot some problems and get us over some humps. So introductions first, um, Dom, you wanna say aye? Sure, I'm Dom D. Pasquale. I'm the DevOps architect at Penn State University in the Department of Software Engineering. And I am John. Like, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I do all things Kubernetes and pipelines and all that fun stuff. And I am Sean Smith. I'm the director of software engineering, and uh, we we build software for Penn State University. Next, please. So a little bit of background. So last March, like everybody else, we were all kind of affected by what happened with the, the COVID outbreak. And uh, since we work in higher education, what that meant for us is that we had to find a way to send all of our students home very, very quickly while trying to keep them engaged and coming up with a plan to bring them back safely in the fall. Um, what happened was we reached out, we had a bunch of vendors that we were dealing with for doing testing. We had on-site testing. And we had no way to tie all these things together. So we quickly took a, built a system to pull all the pieces together to go all the way from testing, test resulting to contact tracing. Um, and fortunately we're built on top of a microservice infrastructure. Uh, and Dom has done a really great job of terraforming a lot of the, our, our actual backend infrastructure out. So we were, able, we were able to turn things very, very quickly. Um, we changed directions in the spring semester of 2021. It was decided by the university that all the students would have to be tested 72 hours before they could come back, and then again within 10 days of return. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with Penn State, we're, we're a pretty large institution. So for those that were returning to campus, that really equated to about 68,000 scheduled tests in a, in a kind of a very short period of time. Um, next, please. So what we were doing is we have a bunch of Commonwealth campuses and we have the main campus, and we were sending out test uh, requests, invitations for tests, a thousand at a time. Um, and so, somebody who uh, Dom was kind enough to not want to mention, so he called him someone, but he knows who he is, Chris, uh, wanted to see just how quickly we could kind of push the system and see what it could take. And again, this is something that we didn't really plan for large scaling. We had to build it very, very quickly. So we weren't entirely sure how it was going to work. We had half of the infrastructure on premise, half of the infrastructure was in the cloud. Um, so we had to kind of figure out what, what the heck was gonna happen when we did this. Uh, next slide. So why Linkerd? Um, so Linkerd, we, we had tried other service meshes previously um, and we found some challenges in them in the configuration. We couldn't, we, had, we struggled with some of the, the, the tools that we wanted. Um, and then I was at KubeCon a couple of years back and I went to a presentation on Linkerd and I saw how easily it installed um, how smoothly th things went, and I immediately texted Don. Uh, the, pr the person that was aforementioned in the previous slide was also in the presentation, also texted Don, Dom. And, and what we recognize is that, you know, with Linkerd, we, we got a lot of capability with far less complexity. Uh, mutual TLS is great. I mean, who doesn't like security? Free retries is great because uh, we get tired of building that into our code. But the real bang that we got from Linkerd is the observability. So observability really gave us the, the opportunity to go in and kind of visualize and see things at a new level. Okay, let's get started with the demo. On my laptop, I have two clusters of Minikube running, an east and west cluster, and I will show what that means here in the next slide. Linkerd 2.8 running since at the time of the event, we had Linkerd 2.8 and I didn't want to change anything. Uh, the load test will be run via K6, and I'll be quickly stepping up to 200 virtual users to really drive drive load on the on my laptop. And we're just doing simple gets for this endpoint. Uh, I will mention quickly that since we are doing both <laughs> running two clusters on my laptop and the load test tool on my laptop, there will be some resource contention, and there's a good chance that some of the performance issues we see aren't necessarily induced by latent services. It's just a system resource contention problem. But the way the east and west clusters are laid out on my laptop are similar to what 
our environment was during the real production outage, well, partial outage. East is representing what we had running in AWS and West is representing what is running on-prem at Penn State. And the you know unhappy stick figure here had a browser launched from the invite taking you to the scheduling system. The scheduling app you know in the browser was calling the top level back end service demo service x. Demo service x depends on the on prem on these three demo ser demo service a b and c. So x depends on a b and c. You also notice that a and b depend on c. And then C depends on two simple HTTP bins and demo service D. Now, demo service C is actually our RBOC service, and which is which is why it's so dependent. Everything depends on it. From demo service C, it depends on what we're simulating here is just you know three random little services, but in reality, it would have been. Um, authentication and authentication and authorization databases or services that are out of our control, out of our uh, um, software engineering's control. So we're going to jump over now to some terminal, so we could go. I can show you how this is all set up. Let's see. First, I have nothing magic, uh, just a quick script to start the mini cube clusters. I have a east and west cluster start, and I have port ranges specified so we don't overlap port ranges on my laptop. And then we just do a basic install of Linkerd on both of those east and west clusters. So we can see on my current context, which is the West cluster, we have Linkerd installed in West, Linkerd installed and running in East, and we have the applications that were in the diagram. We have a simple service definition and deployment definition, and the application is dependent via configuration and environment variables on three service running in three services running in the West cluster. Uh, 0.4 is the IP for the West clusters um, ingress on my laptop. 0.3 is for the East cluster. Um, I won't spend too much time looking at all of the definitions in the West cluster since there are a lot but demo service C, which is back to the diagram, demo service C, which is the, what the R the R box simulator, right? It depends on D and the two simple HTTP bins. Here's that sit, set up here. And demo service C is down here. The definition for the deployment for demo service D has one replica and a, and a sim a injected delay of 200 milliseconds. All right, so to, I just wrote another quick little script, nothing fancy again, just to make sure that I apply the right configuration to the right cluster. I just run that and it will deploy those pods as needed. So in the West cluster, We have all the components. In East, we have the components. And a quick, I'm going to switch tabs one more time. And quick test here, just to make sure it's still running. Yes. Yeah, so when I call 0 0.3, I'm calling demo service X. And this then calling, making calls to these three services. And demo service C is calling these three services. So that's the way that the traffic is flowing. The load generator script, like I mentioned earlier, is just going to ramp up quickly to 200 virtual users calling demo service X. I'll do that right now. 
while that's launching in another terminal over here, I'm going to start my monitoring. So I'm just doing quick, simple port forwards to each cluster for the Linkerd web portal, the dashboard. Um, then in this browser here, I will launch those localhost 80. Now I'll increase the font size because I'm not, I don't want it to be too small. Localhost 8081. So we'll see here in, in our deployments, we have in the West cluster, demo service ABCD, and in our East cluster, demo service X. Already we're seeing P95 latencies of 28 seconds. So it's going bad already. And this is what it was like once we sent out a thousand invites and then all of a sudden those thousand people or so decided to click on the link to start signing up for their, their test, scheduling their test. All right, so what I would like to do right now is show you the, what we really used to see what was going on. We, we were big in the Grafana dashboards that day watching performance of everything. So let me just launch these two dashboards. So here we have demo service X and we can see you now we don't have a very high request per second, but our latency is just terrible over here. The success rate panel, we seem to be okay. In reality, when we had our problems, the success rate was not 100% the whole way across. And our latency was terrible. So we had a mix of, you know, had the best of both worlds as, as far as failure was going. Now, the interesting thing is the, the reason we really wanted to sh share what we went through here is we could see in Demo Service X, the outbound traffic had high latency. So that was something that was would help us troubleshoot like, oh, okay, so we have this terrible outbound latency, but there's nothing down here in this dashboard telling us that we're connected to anything. And that's because we had dependent, we had dependencies in another cluster. And this is the other cluster we're just connect to via simple ingress. It's not a Linkerd multi-cluster. And even then a few of us in the Linkerd community were chatting Currently, or last, last time I checked, there wasn't a way to aggregate metrics between multiple clusters Prometheus to then render these other de um, out, outbound deployment dependencies. So in other words, to have, back to my diagram here, to have the metrics, Linkerd metrics from service X and service A and service B and service C in this separate cluster all in one dashboard. That, that's something we would love to see in the future and maybe we'll try to figure it out another day. So we, this is what gave us our first indication that it must be happening on-prem. So whatever we're talking to in our other cluster must be the problem. So we jumped into the Linkerd, just like here, we had a separate Linkerd dashboard and se separate Grafana dashboards to dig into. Um, you know, and we started poking around, looking at all the different services that our service X was dependent on, and we could see like, oh, these are all failing miserably. You know, latency is really high. And, and then of course we check service C or demo service C because it's our hard box system. We check it, you know, usually first. And we saw that it had terrible latency down here we would have seen our dependent services for service C and that, well, this service call was okay. This service call was okay, but it was really this one to demo service D that was the problem. So if we go to demo service D, we see that, oh, this thing is just, you know, it has no outbound traffic. It's super latent. Um, so of course the first thing we did is we just scaled that guy up. I'll have to restart my load test, but oh, wrong terminal. So we're gonna go to demo service D 
and we're going to scale him up because, well, maybe he's a single threaded app and he just needs some more replicas. So we're going to apply that. Um, this should be the West cluster. Starting up right now. And we're going to restart that load test. So it's going to ramp up pretty hard here. We'll watch. We'll watch the demo service X to see what kind of picture we get here. I'm going to change the refresh rate to 30 seconds on these. Apologize for the pop-ups. It seems like you can't uh, actually stop everything. So we're at 54 simulated users and it's going and going and going. So we can see here our, our latencies were you know pegged at 50 seconds, but in reality, if we go back to the load test screen, well, it's not letting me scroll up right now. Let me scroll up. We had failed requests coming from the load test tool where we you know, had just having timeouts and they were probably exactly the type of thing that the students were feeling when they were trying to schedule their, cl uh, schedule their classes, their tests. Let's go back here, let's see, refresh one more time. Uh, we have a 20 second P90, what's that, P95? Yeah, P99 and P95 are both at 20 seconds right now. So, so far it is better. We can see over here that demo service D, its latency is better. But again, still 10 seconds is not ideal whatsoever since everything depends on service C and service C depends on service D, which has this latency problem. So in, while this was happening, while we were trying to scale out components and we were staring at these graphs, trying to understand what was happening, uh, all that kind of good stuff, we had one of our, or maybe a few of our other teammates looking at the code of service C to determine if there was any inefficient logic in the application and it turned out there was. So we we were constantly checking demo service D with every request that came from the user here all the way through. Well, it turns out we didn't need to do that check. It was, uh, I won't go into the details about why it was the check was there and why it's no longer important, but the moral of the story is it helped us understand that we had this extra code in demo service C checking D for no good reason. And demo service D ended up being a service that was single threaded and wasn't meant to handle this type of load. And it was also out of our control. So our load test is currently scaling down, I believe. Yes, it is. And let's see what our pictures look like from that last run. Now see, it's still crept up. So 40 second response time. However, we didn't have any failures this time. So, you know, from a user point of view, you waited for 40 seconds and that's totally unacceptable. However, we didn't have any timeouts. <laughs> so I'm gonna make one more change. We modified the code and I'll just turn this back down to one replica because we don't need it. We modified the code to not depend on demo service D anymore. Uh, let me apply that. Check pods. And I apologize, I've been doing um, aliases this whole time. So all KGPO is, is Kube control get pods. 
Once this guy's ready to go, fizz. All right, we're going to run this load test one last time. Well, I tell one little, one last little story about how this went. So the way this happened in real life, it was, there weren't breaks like are there happening with my load testing, right? This was just constant load and constant users and uh, a team of us frantically trying to figure out what was happening. And, uh, you know, lots of, lots of stress and worry and all that kind of good stuff. Um, we, if we didn't have these pictures, these that dashboards that Linkerd has pre pre made for us, right? This is all out of the can. I showed a little bit ago. the uh, The installation of Linkerd was default, all custom, uh, no custom configuration at all. I mean, without these metrics that the Linkerd system is giving us, we would we would have been in trouble for a much longer period of time. I'm sure we would have figured it out eventually by you know looking at metrics coming out of in in ingress logs or something like that. But because we had Linkerd and what it gives us out of the box, we were able to troubleshoot fairly quickly where the bottleneck was because of the latency graph and the outbound traffic latency to kind of tell us, hey, this is upstream or downstream, depending on how you tell your stories. Um, we'll see here, demo service D now has no traffic because I turned it off, the call for it. So here's demo service C, again, demo service C, our, our box service. It's now, its latency is super low now because it's no longer dependent on that problem service. And this is the same type of experience we had that day, we got rid of that extra check and all of a sudden everything just started zooming right along and we were able to get through the rest of our testing in a reasonable amount of time, or, or testing our uh, invites to schedule the testing. This load test is almost done. Why don't we just wait to see it complete? Uh, there we go. So this is demo service X, our top level service that the user's browser is directly connecting to. We can see our latency now is much, much lower in a much more reasonable range. In fact, our P99 is two seconds, which is, I would say, well, compared to 60 seconds, it's super good. And I'm looking at my load test app here in the background and seeing that we're still scaling up to 200 users. So why don't we let it go the whole way before we end the demo part of our presentation. Plus it's always fun to see what happens if you let it run long enough. Maybe my operating or my laptop will run out of resources. Oh, we're scaling down. So just to zoom in on this time frame, we can see that our P99 was at two seconds or 95 was even lower. So this is much more acceptable as far as, you know, the real time feel for the human and, and trying to schedule, uh, schedule their testing. All right, with that, we'll move on. In, in summary, without the visibility that Linkerd was giving us, we would, we would still be, no, not literally, but we would have been troubleshooting that problem for hours trying to dig down to where the, the real performance bottleneck was and everything um, and as I mentioned in the demo if there was the ability to do multi-cluster performance metrics and visualization that would have been even better and faster because what I did in you know 15 20 minutes we spent a long time just figuring out where where to dig and I just kind of zoomed through the solution all in the, all in the demo. With that, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Thanks, folks.